knows that we are more than conquerors. Again, Satan can read the signs. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. God looks out for his own. God looks out for his own. Aren't you glad? The hope of the saints. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. And make us manifest the savor of his knowledge. We do not fight for victory. We fight from victory. When you are saved, you are victorious. But you got to still fight your way through. Now, if you in, go to 2 Corinthians, go to 2 Corinthians 2.14. Go to 2 Corinthians 2.14. Go to 2 Corinthians 2.14 through 16. Now, thanks. Is that what it says, Deacon Hunt? Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make us manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet-smelling savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death and to the other the savor of life. Who is sufficient for these things? When the Roman soldiers, when Oliver, when the Roman soldiers were victorious, they would bring in the slaves marching and they, and, and they would burn incense. There was one savor unto life, that was the victorious. And there was another savor unto death, that was the ones that are going to be slaves or put to death. Or oh, the Bible's a heavy book, y'all. Stay with me now. He leads us in the triumphant procession, all by his power and blood. The blood moves. Pastor, you always coming up, well, that's the latest thing out now. The blood moons could be the beginning of birth pains. Stay with me now. You women pick me up. Jesus said, this is the beginning of sorrows. Labor pains do not begin until shortly before delivery. Labor pains do not begin until shortly before delivery time, and they occur with, uh, occur with increasing frequency until the baby is born. So right now, the world is in labor pains, and the pains are becoming frequent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Get right with God. <laughs> and do it now. Some in the church today can't stand strong meat. <laughs> Still on baby food of the word. Some, I don't need the church because I believe. I don't need the church because I believe. Pastor Jones can't tell me nothing because we've been going to Bible class. I've been reading my Bible. I've been going online reading. I'm pastor. Don't know that I'm. I'm on. I've got a study course online, and uh, I don't need that church. And the Bible said, "Forsake not the assembly." Stay with me now. I, I'm not preaching tonight. I'm teaching tonight. And look what it says over in James. Go to James that second chapter. I got news for you. Go to James that second chapter. Go to. Now, I want to tell you something well, how, why the devil is mad with some of us in church. Go to James, that second chapter, and look at verses 18, 18 through 19. Are you there? You there, Deacon Hunt? Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God. Thou do as well. The devil also believe and he trembles. <laughs> Tell somebody, oops. 
So you ain't heavy. They around here acting heavy, Pastor. But I believe what the devil believes. But guess what? The devil believes, but excuse the grammar, but he ain't saved. Some of y'all believe, but you ain't saved. See what it says, Deacon Hunt? See what it says, Oliver? Thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well. The devil also believes, and he trembles. People, here it comes, y'all. Here it comes, Sister Diane. People are shocked to learn that demons have faith. Pastor, you walking heavy here tonight. Uh, people are shocked to learn that demons have faith. What do demons believe? For one thing, they believe in the existence of God. They are neither atheists nor agnostics. And even the devils told Jesus, why are you tormenting us? It ain't your time yet. Read it home. Mark that third chapter. Write it down. Mark that third chapter, verses 11 and 12, and Luke 8, 31. Even the demons submit to the power of the word. They respect the word. And even they respect holiness. The devil can't stand folks sitting in church, shucking and jiving, trying to act holy and you're not holy. That's why they told, that's why they got some straight Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Even demons respect the power of the word. Now, hear me now, and I'm ready to close. Believe me. But believing and trembling is not a saving experience. Boy, I can see I got a good class here tonight. I clear I have. I'm, 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 I'm paying you all a compliment. I got a good class here tonight. <laughs> Stay with me now. Believing and trembling is not a saving experience. Hear me now. A person can be enlightened in mind and even stirred in heart and lost forever. It must be repentance and a change of life. You've got to accept the finished work of Calvary and the blood of Jesus Christ. Y'all know how heavy my late friend was, William Augustus Jones. Farrakhan was so impressed with him because Bill Jones ate him up in the Old Testament. He told Bill Jones, I want to come to Bethany and preach on Easter Sunday. Bill Jones said, you can come if you're willing to stand up there and make a public confession that Jesus Christ is Lord. <laughs> Some Baptist preachers would have let him in the pulpit. He ain't coming up in here unless he makes a public confession that Jesus is Lord. When Farrakhan got in trouble at the Million Man March, he flunked for a whole hour till he got over to Jesus. <laughs> Stay with me now. It must be a change of life. The Bible said a prophet that has a dream, let him tell his dream. If it's even a lie, let him tell it. And he that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. And the Lord told me, go back and preach my word faithfully. Why stay in church all your life? And as I told you on Sunday, hear me now. Why stay in church, brother, ask you all your life and don't know the battle plan? The battle plan is not annual day. I'm going to get in trouble. I know you need all of this, and I hope that, and I hope that when, Pastor, when Pastor Watson takes over, I hope he lets some things because we need some organization. But you have to realize you were dealing, for 38 years, you were dealing with a prophetic preacher. I didn't have time for nonsense. Are y'all hearing what I, and I'm not saying, that Pastor, I'm not saying you, because you got to, because you, you need structure. 
But God, this has been my ministry. And I don't expect everybody to be the same way because he'll bring on some things and make some things live that I wish I could have done. Stay with me now. Understanding the times. Understanding the times. The Lord told me to lay this on you before I got here tonight. I've been there many times, but you haven't paid it any attention. Go to 2 Peter. Go to 2 Peter, that first chapter. And I know you have. I got no right to say that because I don't know what you've learned. And excuse me for that. I'm serious. Go to 1 Peter. 2 Peter, that first chapter. Again, verses 19 through 21. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Well, till you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. Knowing this, that no prophecy of the scripture is a private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Peter called the world a dark place. This dark place, Sister Hunts means, here in the scripture, means murky or dismal swamp. <laughs> it means, Sister Butler, Sister Claudia, and all it means, it means a murky, a murky, dismal swamp. History began in a lovely garden. And because of the fall, the garden is, um, has now become a murky swamp. And note what he said. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Pastor Jones, I know you're going to have to do some heavy teaching. But as you close out, he gave me that this afternoon. I've been there so many times. But he says, whereto you do well that you take heed. Because you're in a murky swamp. And God is saying, all preachers don't have the same gift. Don't look for Pastor Watson to do everything. And don't look for me to do what Pastor Watson can do. And don't look for Pastor Watson to do what I can do. Because God gave each one of us our gift. And one gift is just as effective as the other. You'll do well to take heed. When you see these things begin to happen, look up. Because your redemption draws nigh. I was thinking when Deacon Hunt told me tonight. I used to tease Sister Fisher, for coming in late, playing with her, but it was better to be late and not here at all. And I would watch her, and I wondered how she would come in. She was coming in to listen to the word. And I'm hoping and praying that on last night, God told her, you got enough word in you now to bring you over. 